Ladies and gentlemen, let's switch into English. A guy who has won medals in big championships over the last 30 years and uh, won one of his first Grand Prix and five classes in Helsinki Horse Show in 1986. He's a man behind the Dutch success. Rob Ehrens, very welcome. to you all. This is not, in fact, my favorite spot to be. Uh, I am the most comfortable in the field with the riders and the horses. And also when uh, we achieve some, uh, some victories, I I'm, I'm rather prefer to be a little bit in the background and uh, with the grooms and everything together. So for me this is new. Um, but thanks for the invitation, Tom. Um, I'm going to try to explain a little bit the, uh, the story, and I won't say it's, it's in total a success story, but the way it went. Um, that is not so easy. Let me start at the beginning. Um, I was 27 years long an international show jumper. I traveled all around the world, and in the end, uh, you always get to a point that uh, you don't have the really top, top horses anymore and then you feel sometimes a little bit like a number on the list that, oh yes, he is also here at the show, but he can't win anymore. So, before that moment came, I made um, a difficult decision by myself. I said, okay, what do I want to do further in my career? Stay on riding or do something else? But I did already before, in the time as an active rider, I loved to train and help people uh, to make a, a better thing in, in, in the horse business. Um, so the step going over in 2002 from active rider into the coaching bar. I was lucky that uh, Dan Nunning, which a lot of you from this country will know, was already for longer than 12 or 14 years the coach of the juniors and the young riders, and he stopped. So that was for me um, a good moment to go to the federation and say, okay, I want to stop riding myself and I want to start being in the coaching world. And they accepted me. I was happy for that. So the first thing that I did was in uh, 2002, the juniors and the young riders, and the difficult part then was that I had no knowledge about that. I didn't, didn't know how to do, so I had to find out myself uh, a way of working and uh, to make the best out of it. We started in the first year, that went really nice. We had a gold medal with the juniors in Hagen, and we had uh, a medal with the young riders uh, also, and that went nice, and uh, I felt happy in it. And to tell you the truth, I did that for three years, and what gives a wonderful, wonderful feeling is working with young people. Because they, they listen, they, they are eager, they want to learn, and that gave me an enormous warm feeling, and I really loved to do it. I did it then for three years, and in the end of 2004, uh, ben Long was in charge of the, the senior riders in, in the Netherlands and he said at first stake he wanted to continue another four years and I said okay, nice, then I can stay with the, the, the young uh, people and continue that but then in the end, a couple of weeks later he said uh, no, I stopped oh, and that was a that was a big thing for our federation because then at that particular moment there was no uh, coach chef they keep for the, for the seniors in the Netherlands. So that was a bit of a problem. They tried a lot. Uh, they were asking me and I said straight away no. Because for me, in my feeling, I was not ready to deal with, uh, in that particular moment, riders like Erik van der Vleuten, Piet Rijmark, uh, all the big names, which are have been in all the years my colleagues' riders. I think, no, this, this, this is nothing for me, that is, that, is, that is difficult, and I have to go and tell all those uh, colleagues what they have to do. So I said to the Federation, no, it's nothing for me. 
Um, that kept on going, that kept on going, and they couldn't find anybody. And when I did it, as an interim, I said to them, I do it as an interim, just till the moment comes that you find somebody else to do the job. I had a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties to solve, because they were made uh, a lot of uh, 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 sayings to riders, if you go in the summer to those and those nation, nation's cups, you can have a spot in the indoor show uh, in the end of the year. But all those promises were still there, but the one who made those promises was not there anymore. So that came up on, on my shoulders, and I tell you, that was a really, really difficult uh, period, because there were riders like Jon Wilhelm who had problems with me there, and all the problems came on to me, on my little shoulders. I think, oh shit, what is this now? <laughs> and then we kept on working, working, working. I had a really, really good backup from our federation, from also the, the people who were standing behind me. And then um, the question came again. And I, I had already earlier the answer. I said, listen, if I could change those things, if I could solve those problems, why not? Let us take it and do it. So that's the, 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 the way that I started my career as a, as a coach of the seniors from the Netherlands. That was at the end of uh, 2004. Then the difficult thing comes, then you have to do it. And I said to myself, what is now the best way to start this? And I sat at home in a quiet moment and I took a piece of paper, a pen, and I wrote the names of the coaches which I was riding under when I was active. And I made two columns, left and right, positive things, negative things, with all the coaches which I was working with. And then I figured out already quickly enough that there was always a lack on uh, clearness in the whole situation. And that is one thing that I really started really carefully and well with, that as a coach you make a line and you have to stick on that line. And it's not going on the line then, off the line, in the line again. It's, it's the most important thing and that's what I missed underneath the wings of my other coaches uh, that line what they, what you say, you have to do. And that is a really important thing. What I had also in, those, in, in that period was that you saw always when we had meetings, um, that when the meeting was over and we, and we talked about problems, we talked about shows and all the things that comes around, then everybody was always silent. And when the meeting was over, and everybody went out again, everybody was talking again. That was also the first time when we had a, a, a meeting with my uh, riders, and we said we are now, this is a big room, but then normally we do it in a small room, said we are here, we discuss all the problems, and we solve the problems here in this little room. And those riders who want to speak outside, they have a problem. So I was really clear on that, and after that, uh, we had two or three meetings that was a little bit outside, a little bit mumbling, but in the end, are we now so far that we have a meeting, we have it three or four times a year, we have a meeting, meeting takes 15 minutes, and everything is solved in that 15 minutes, and after that we have half an hour, three quarters of an hour nicely together, and we're speaking about all the shows and all blah blah blah, this is wrong. So that's, that's, that's a nice thing, and nobody is talking and complaining uh, outside the room. So that was already a really big step in that direction. Um, I believe that when you have a straight line, you need to be also somebody who can communicate. And that is also a thing, but it's not so easy, because when you can't communicate, you can't get into your eyes, you can't get into your owners. Uh, there's a lot in the balloon, but uh, is there which you have to keep on your side to achieve uh, the results at shows, and also to get 
rise into the team. So that was a, a really important thing that uh, uh, we went in the first two, three years um, visiting all the big sponsors from the, from the people who were the riders who were in the squad, uh, going there, talking with the, with, with the owners, uh, and made the road also clear to get them into the team. Because that is at the moment also the most difficult part, because we have so many shows, and uh, we can't go to all the shows because we don't have that amount of horses that we can do at all. So it needs a really good communication to, to make sure you get them. And the first year we started in 2005, that was in uh, San Patriano, the European Championships. We had, in fact, we had nothing. And then the Federation told me, uh, uh, skip the, the European Championships, but make sure you stay in the top league, because that, they thought that was, that was more important than the, the championship. Then we had that meeting again with our riders, and we spoke about it, and then the riders said all together, no, we are going with you to the European Championships and we're going to go for the top league and we stay in. Okay. And then we, we, we figured it out and then uh, we went with the team to San Patriano. Uh, again, not with the team that uh, the, other, the other world would say uh, they have the best horses. No, we had a, we had a team together. We had five riders including the, the, the reserve, which, which made a team. And with that really strong team, we made two medals. We made a bronze with the team, and we made a bronze individual, Jeroen Dubbelen, with a horse that normally couldn't do that. But to give you that small explanation how important it is that, that you are a group. And that's, in fact, 2005, made me and made the success what we had in all those years till now. It's now 10 years ago that I started. And for sure we had years that it also was not really top because we have sport. And show jumping is, in my opinion, the most honest sport because when you go in the arena and you knock one fence down, you have four falls. If it's Ludger Weber, if it's Jeroen Wibbeldam, if it's Gerdo Schröder or somebody else. That is, that, is, that is a fact. And also, when you are really high on the list as, a, as that every that all world says, oh, Germany is going to win, or Holland is going to win. Even that is impossible to say from the beginning, because a lot, a lot can happen, a lot can change. To go a little bit back in, 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 uh, in, the, in the way of uh, uh, how important the, the team spirit is, is in uh, 2003 uh, I had a, 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 a fantastic junior team. They won everywhere. Everywhere where we went to the Nations Cup was they won the, the Nations Cup. It was really strong, but bit by bit I saw the team a little bit falling apart. And, and I was also green in, in that uh, thing, so I didn't know really how to, how to solve that, but I learned a lot from that. And we went to San Remo, it was European Championships, and I came there and I looked, oh, see, one camp there, one camp there, uh, one was sitting alone, and in the end, the result was a 12 spot or 14 spot. The, team was falling apart and the it was gone. So no no good result. And the same year we had a, a young riders team with no good horses and uh, uh, but good riders and a good team spirit and we want to help again. So that's what I want to say. That's already a little bit the secret about uh, how it goes. And before I left my uh, home yesterday my wife said to me, don't tell them too much. <laughs> because, because otherwise they want to win too much. And that's the thing which what we what we want to do, because it's not so easy. I can give all the explanations, but uh, in fact it's not so easy to do. But what is easy is what I just said a minute ago, straight line, 
and try to, to make a team. That, that, that's really important. After that we went and that went really well and uh, we went in 2006 uh, to the World uh, Equestrian Games in Aachen. Uh, we won the gold there, it was a historical moment. Um, year after we went to the European Championships in, in uh, Mannheim, we won gold again. And uh, nearly with the same team, but also in Mannheim, what was really uh, um, yeah, a bit new for, for Europe that I uh, brought in a young rider uh, which I, I know, knew already from the young riders period and that was Vincent Foren and I brought him in in the first season in the top league shows and I went with him to the European Championships and he was 21 years old and I put him at first place to start in the team and everybody said, you're crazy. He's new. You put him at first spot to start. Is that not a You can't do that. I said, why? Why not? I know the ball. And what I want to say from that is that it's really important that we put a lot of time and effort in uh, scouting young people, um, looking where they are. And I go later on back on that, that subject, what is the age of starting, but we do already a lot in uh, the age of 12 till 21, looking and scouting and trying to get them in, in a training uh, system to, to make everything uh, from the beginning as good as possible. What I do as a senior coach, still a lot, I'm really, really close involved. Uh, with the, uh, the pony coach, with the junior and young riders coach, because I want to know how those young people are going to make themselves better. And the more I know them, the more I can use them when they're reaching the, the, the age that I can take them in my teams. Take, for example, uh, last year when we started with Frank Schuppert, he was 19 years old. And I knew him from the junior young riders. And then I picked him already, when he had a horse that was able for, to do that, I picked him already in the, in the, in the big uh, CSEOs. And he did a marvelous job, and he was fifth uh, this year also in uh, uh, the way. But bit by bit, you keep on working, and um, success, it's nice, but I always say you are as good as your last show. And that is the truth. Because after uh, winning, you go home and you have to work harder, even harder, to get the same result. And everybody said, after the two gold medals in, in Aachen and Mannheim, said, well, oh, those, that doesn't happen anymore so, so often. But if you keep on working with a good spirit and with a lot of good riders and a lot of good owners, trying to produce horses, you see that we did after that also a couple of really good things, like the two silver medals in the Olympic Games in London. Now we had uh, uh, two gold medals in, in, uh, in, in Cannes, and then also winning the, the, the final in Barcelona. That, that is, yeah, this year is, is amazing. But still now we have to yeah, go on the road again and uh, we are already working now really hard for uh, Rio de Janeiro in 2016 with a stop in between next year the European Championships in Aachen. Um, also to, to make the best out of it there. And that is the thing you have to keep on looking forward, forward, forward to achieve the things also in the future. That is a little bit the way um, we work, the little bit in a short version uh, how everything went from the beginning till, till now. And um, you see also that it is not luck, you have to, you have to work really hard to, uh, to get those things. Um, I think it's for me now the, the time to listen to all of you now. If there are any questions, that's why I don't make my uh, speech that long, because otherwise you fall asleep. Uh, and I hope I can answer a lot of your questions. That
tell them can be maybe also uh, the same as what, what we have at the moment, the two gold medals. And, and one thing is really important, it's, it's also a big thing, be optimistic. As a coach, that's a really uh, important thing. If the coach is sitting down and doesn't know how to do it anymore, then nothing goes. So you always need to be really optimistic, looking into the future, and, and, and bring that over to your life. Tom? Tell a bit about your, your talent system. Okay. Um, the talent system we have is, uh, is already, uh, I think, um, a lot of countries in the world look to us and they say, wow, that's, that's a good system. We made already a lot of um, um, things for other countries. And I must say, sometimes, I feel that a little bit hard when uh, a lot of uh, Dutch people with, with a lot of know-how go to all other countries and bringing in uh, the things we do. But in the end, the success can only come when you, when you can combine it with the people. Um, we found, and that is really important, we found a big sponsor in the Rabobank who uh, supplies the money that we can do that. What do we do? We look every year with uh, the best trainers we have in our little country. They look everywhere in little shows if we can find people which we think have talent. Uh, we organize every year one day at the Federation Center, and this year was even nice because we won the two gold medals in Cannes, but the eventing won a bronze medal, the dressage won a couple of medals, the Paras won a lot of medals, and two days after Cannes, we were already in the Federation Center, all the coaches, all the medals, medal winners, helping and training the young talents. And that is, that is wonderful, because one way or another, the, the, the gold medal uh, winner will say, yes, what about that? No, we are one big family, and we all work on the same thing. We want to produce more talents that when the years passing by, that we are not in a, getting in a phase that, that, that we didn't work on that, because then you can't, you can't stay still by the success. So then we also help our trainers to get higher on the list, that they get more know-how about teaching. We do all a lot on that. Then on the day, we select a number of riders out of all the disciplines. Out of that day, uh, we go with them in a, in a program, in a training program during the winter. In the first stage, we gave them 10 lessons from top trainers. And after the 10 lessons, we hoped that they had a lot more know-how about riding and that we could put them on the road that they know how, what they had to do. That didn't work out really well in, after a couple of years. And then we said, um, what can we do different? Because now we, we, we gave them 10 trainings. And then we see them back in the summer, and we don't have the result what we had expected. So then we change it again. Now we do four uh, lessons, and then we let them all come back to the center, and then we judge them again. Together with the, with the trainers, uh, all the trainers are there. All the trainers have everything on writing what the, the students did. And then we can look after four lessons, uh, did they make themselves better? We can work on that again. When they come, we give some, some small details on you have to work on that and that and that. And then we go back for another four, and then we look again. And that works better. The thing is what we also work really hard in our talent plan is that we make uh, the children aware of one really, really important fact, and that is that we cannot teach them how to ride. Impossible. We can only give them all the tools and they have to work at home. 
And that is also a bit the plan why we changed in the four lessons and then they come coming back and we can see if they did something with it. Out of that, we select in our Rabobank talent team, we select writers, uh, which we think, uh, and that is a really good thing because that comes out of the financial support from the Dutch Olympic Committee, comes when we pick talents in that talent team, which can grow into the highest level by the seniors. And then, that's a benefit for our federation, that we can do more in the sport. If I name a, a couple of names, uh, Pierre Couchard was a talent team of the year, and he is a success at the moment. Michael van der Vleuten was a talent team, Gerd Jan Bruggen was a talent team, and I can even mention a couple more, also from the dressage and also from the eventing. So that's, in fact, the, the thing where we work on Tom, uh, is, is that an, a correct answer? Because sometimes I look a little bit like somebody from, uh, from the ministry. I can, can talk a lot and a lot around, but... Oh, many questions. And then also, if somebody has a question in, in Finnish, uh, I will be happy to translate also. Thank you. A couple of basic questions. How, how many members do you have in your federation, approximately? Um, and for the jumping one? No, no, the total of the... Oh, that is a different question. I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, okay, then I have to, have to ask the federation. I like that thing. <laughs> <laughs> the the show jumpers. But we can, find, we can find that. How, how many registered the show jumpers you have? Do you remember that? No idea. Okay. <laughs> this is I'm sure you will answer that. <laughs> your the budget of the of, of show show time in a year. How big is that? that? But but it's but comes in from yeah. you you're asking questions which I have no clue about. <laughs> <laughs> but but we can find it out and <laughs> look for it. <laughs> I'm not a financial, uh, from, a, from the financial department. No, I, I understand that you have a lot of professional organizers, show organizers yes. in the Netherlands. Is that the, the way that you think Europe is going? Because we have, have a few very good ones, and I think we will get even more and more. Now, is that, is that the way that this is going to go in Europe? It, you mean that, that um, when you have good organized shows, that that is the, the, the key to success? Yeah, I think it, it, it could it be part of your, of your success. You have good shows organized by professionals. Yeah, that, it, it's always good when you have uh, uh, in your country uh, uh, a professional group who organize, is organizing shows, the better shows you have. Uh, the more your own writers you can put in there, because uh, it's difficult to get uh, as many as possible writers away to abroad to other shows, because that's not that possible. And when you have good shows in your own country, you always we have we made in those shows an agreement with the organizers that we have 40 percent plus two spots under the 25, uh, which we can put in our own shows, and then you can make them go. But I don't think that's the only, uh, um, that's maybe a little part of the, the key to success. The, the most important thing is the organization in your own federation, which makes it more open for riders to go everywhere. The better that you can organize that, the better that you can uh, uh, make your, your riders ride, the more they can, can go to other shows. But for sure it's important to have good shows in your own country. But I don't think that will, that is that is that that is the the, the, the only reason. Mm -hmm. I think you you need you need to have a good structure in your federation. You need to have a good uh, uh, plan to uh, to make the riders better. Uh, I think that is more important than having uh, shows in your own country. The more you develop your riders and. Uh, uh, the more you also, when they are young, teach them to be polite, that, uh, that when you are polite, you can, doors go more quicker open 
than when you are not polite. And, and that is also a, a thing which we had already a long time talks about with some writers. Yeah, uh, I can't get an invitation. No, I said that, that's not so difficult because you don't open your mouth when you have a show. And you have to go in the show, you have to go to the, to the organizers, go to the secretary of the speak with them and open the road. Think all of those things maybe are more important than only the shows. But for the country, the good shows are important. We found an answer for you, Rob. Uh, two two hundred thousand members in your. <laughs> so, so, yes. Yeah. Uh, who had the next question? Oh, okay, thanks. Very nice to have you here. So nice to see you here, Rob. Uh, you said uh, or told us how to find the talented riders, but how do you find the Riders, the talented horses. How do you get the horses and the riders together? Yeah, because that's one of the big questions. That's that's uh, a really interesting question, and also a really difficult question, because we can we can uh, look uh, to riders if they have talent. We can see that quickly enough. Uh, but horses is a different scenario. That's that's really that's really a difficult thing. To give a quick ex explanation, if you look to the young horse uh, competitions, you see a lot of horses, and you see a lot of uh, flashing horses, and uh, uh, you see them when they are four or five, then you think, oh, that's going to be a top uh, talent, and when they are eight or nine, it's nothing left. From the opposite, it goes easily when you have a more difficult one in, in four or five years old, and it gets given the time to develop, then you maybe have a, an extremely good, nice uh, uh, nine years old one. That, that is already the first difficult, difficult part. Um, but the most difficult thing is, and we also struggle with that, uh, uh, with that problem, how can we bring the, uh, the best horse by the best rider? That is an extremely, extremely difficult point. Often enough, we see that uh, a normal rider has an unbelievable good horse, but that horse is part of the family, or that horse is part of the owner, which is maybe also the sponsor from the rider, and you have no chance of breaking that down. Then it's a difficult thing. Then it's for me, uh, the task to get the, the normal rider on that brilliant horse uh, in training and, and helping them to get maybe to a higher level. Um, but that is difficult. If we could uh, take the best horse and put the best rider on, that would be the best scenario. But that is not working. In, in, in reality, that's not working. Um, what we are trying, and that is also difficult, to get the, uh, a lot of information by the breeders, um, by the good breeders, out of the good families, we try already, when they are young, to bring them to the, our younger riders. Um, that is also easier said than done. And we had a lot of discussions with that, with all the, uh, the breeders, because at first take, breeders who have really good young horses don't want to spend too much money putting the horses in the barn by riders and uh, paying for them. On the other hand, the young riders, which are willing to do it, and they are also learning and they can do it, they have the problem again. They can't take those horses because nobody is paying for that. Uh, we are also looking for a solution in that way, and that's a difficult one. Uh, because it should be, in, in looking into the future, that we would be uh, must be able to find a one way of a sponsor or whatever that says, okay, we select a lot of really uh, good young horses from the breeders and we try to bring them uh, stable in by uh, our best young riders or maybe also by older riders. But that's a thing that is really difficult at the moment in, in our country, but I think that this is difficult in, in all the world. Um, and the other part, we started um, I think it's now six or seven, I'm not so good at numbers. Six or seven years ago, we started with the SFN. That's in, uh, in, in, in Dutch, saying 
the Dutch sport horse that was founded uh, by Jacob Meulissen, who works also for the, for the Federation, and he raised, together with uh, a bank, the Verlandschot Banking, uh, they raised a fund uh, where they uh, were looking for, for investors, uh, and they succeeded to get between 20 and 30 investors together to raise an amount of 3.5 million euros, which they are using to buy uh, young horses for five or six years old. Um, we started the, the most famous horse was Utasha from uh, Erik van der Bleuten, which they, uh, which they bought a part. They're, they're buying a part of the horse and a part stays in with the owner. And then all the stakeholders, they stay in, and in fact, uh, they don't make any profit out of it, but they, they're helping our sport with that. Um, horses, that is the first thing what Kathy is also uh, 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 was asking. Then we have a possibility with the selectors uh, to find the rider who would fit on that horse. That is also difficult because in the end, after the period, you know if the combination fits yes or no. But we try uh, to find the riders then on those horses, which are staying in the fund till, uh, let's say for example now, um, Zenit from Jeroen Lerudam is now Zenit SFM. Of course, Zenit SFM, yeah. And is now again another name, but I'll come to that later. So that horse is there and stays still real. That's already a good thing. But there are also four years old ones now, and five years old ones, by uh, other riders, which they perform. And they make the agreement then, when they put a horse, when it's four or five, by a certain rider, that the selectors and the board of the SMN have the chance to say, okay, now the horse is eight, now we're going to bring the horse to Jeroen Dubbeldam, or now we're going to bring the horse to Gerhard Schöner, or whatsoever. And it also can happen that one of those young horses is, for example, by a young rider, and that the combination is so good that they keep that together. On the other hand, uh, to keep those horses in our little country, we, uh, we took the old uh, NOV, Dutch Olympic horse, out of the cupboard, and that is brought in new life again, but it's also, together with our Dutch uh, Olympic uh, commission, they put money in and the Federation puts money in, and now we have also in the jumping four horses like London is now uh, Blocks London MOP, and we have uh, Zen is in that now, we have Verdi uh, in it, and we have Shiroko Blue in it. So that, that's the thing what we do with, with the horses, but a long story in short, to go back to your question, Kathy, that's, that's the most difficult part of, uh, uh, of our job, to get, to get that done. And that, that is a lot of work, but maybe there's somebody here in, 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 in this room who can give me an answer, uh, what's the best way to do. And then more questions, who have the next one? If you want to ask in Swedish, then you will be very Hello, I wanted to ask um, about your training system there and um, how it how it works there because I know that here in Finland it's sometimes a little bit wild because we do have professional trainers but then we also have these sort of unprofessional ones and sort of anybody can call themselves trainers. So how do you feel it works and how they should work with the Federation trainers? Yeah. Um, the wild, we also have. And uh, the good thing in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the Netherlands is that we try to get everything in a structure. For example, we, all our trainers who, who train uh, our talents, they need to have uh, a high level certificate of, uh, uh, of training. And uh, it is a fact that we have still have a lot of uh, trainers who have no certificate, and that is in fact, that can be dangerous. I don't know how it is here, but if you have no license and you teach and something happens and you have the wrong people, 
then you can have a, a big serious problem. So we, we do a lot in developing the, the trainers. Uh, we do a lot of things with them. Uh, we have uh, uh, the, a program also uh, for all the trainers in, in, in our country, which comes together a couple of times a year, and then we work on a lot of things. Uh, we get together, we talk about subjects, we, uh, we go into the uh, arena, um, teaching, training, and helping. That, that, that's a really important, important thing. And if you, if you keep it everything in the Wild West, that, that is difficult. And uh, we have a lot of those. You say you have them also here. The thing is, you, you, you get into that, you get a feeling with that when you go to a little show. And uh, it is not like years and years ago, everybody knew the, the, the riders. When I go to a small show, uh, I think six out of ten people even don't know me. And that is nice, because then you're standing in a warm-up arena, and then you get all the information from all the trainers. And then you, you, you have a feeling you say, shit, <laughs> that is a lot of information they get wrong, but it's, it's a lot of rubbish. And, and that is the thing that what we try to, but it's impossible for us to, to, to control that completely. But we do a lot of work on that. And what is a good trainer? Um, I think a good trainer is somebody who can, can get into a combination. And to give a, a small example, if you ride and, and you ride well, and then somebody comes and he's going to change completely everything in the opposite, then it doesn't work. And as a trainer, you need to get, at first stage, you need to get into the horse, you have to get into the, the rider which you want to train, and then you can achieve good things. And that is also the way I work. It would be um, really a bad thing, and I learned also that from the past, that when I go to a, a Nations Cup with my team, and I'm standing there at the warm-up arena, and I say, you have to do it the way I say it. That's the word. You have to, you have to feel it. You have to, uh, to feel how much can you do. How, can I change some things? Maybe in the end I don't change a lot. I only change details, little things. And that's, that's important. And to get more structure in that whole thing, that is, again, the way to success. Yeah, I can help you with the statistics. I'm back here, the Secretary General of the Federation. I ju just checked with the numbers that uh, the European Equestrian Federation and, and Netherlands has uh, 1,999 FAE registered riders, as we in Finland have 197. Uh, the, the Netherlands has uh, 10,800 FAI registered horses, we have a couple of hundred. Uh, the Netherlands has 7,339 national shows, as we have 138. The Netherlands has 46 international shows, as we have five. There are more than 400,000 horses in the Netherlands, which is a much smaller country than Finland. And we have problems here in our country when we have like 75,000 people. People start to blame us for having too much horses. <laughs> I don't think you are upset that I didn't know the, the, the numbers. <laughs> That's my job. Yeah. Next question, so I'm a Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I could. Actually, I'm a little bit more. 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 Uh, looking for the talent, <coughs> planning together young horses with riders, and then having those uh, meetings after four times training, and then going with the pupils to the shows. Are you about a thousand employed people, or how do you manage all this? No, no, that, that's a number I know, that's not a thousand. 
<laughs> no, it's a matter of organization. And um, I, I'm, in fact, a happy uh, person because the, most of the things uh, what should be done to, to um, get teams together, uh, sending um, writers to shows, uh, all those things what needs to be done in that part of organization is only me. Uh, there is nobody else in Holland who makes a decision who goes to a show. It's only me. Uh, when uh, a team has to be picked for a European Championship, it's only me. That's, uh, that's an easy job. Because it's difficult uh, when you have a, a, a board and, and, and you have to talk about yeah, uh, what team do we want to send away. Uh, so that's already uh, what makes it small. Um, when you have a good organization, like for example, all our the best trainers who do everything for the for the young people, that's a group of eight, <coughs> not more. But we, our country is not so big, and uh, we are quickly somewhere. So when we start our training for the young people, we have uh, let's say between six and eight. Uh, coaches who, who do that, who organize that, and they're standing a uh, couple of times in a week, um, four or five lessons, or maybe three lessons behind each other, training. Um, we had more people in the board, which we increased now. Normally we had, a, for every, uh, uh, for jumping for the, for the, uh, uh, for all the disciplines, we had a commission. A commission with a, with a, with a coach, uh, a chairman, and I think maybe four or five people. We increase that also to bring everything back in, in one commission who comes once in a while together and then we talk about all the disciplines. So we try to bring always the number of people back. Because the more people you have, the more complicated it gets. And, and I think that is everything like that. If, if, are, if there are too many captains on the ship, it sinks. So we have to make sure that we, that we organize that as well as possible. And I think that's also why, uh, because we have not so many uh, big problems in our world, in our country, because the structure is good. Is that the answer you want to hear? Okay, okay. okay. And some of them, some of them might have been a little risky, like Vincent Paul or Gerard Lubodan this year with the young horse. Yes. What do you respect or look for in riders, in, in their characters? And, and, uh... That's an interesting question. Um, I put it always in one form. At first day, I say, when I have to go to a championship with a team, or to a first division nations cup with a team, I always look at the quality of the rider. Plus, I look to the quality of the horse. Uh, then, what is for me really important, if I have number four or number five, which I have to choose from, and number, uh, there is one rider who has a really good horse, but is not a really good team player, I would prefer to take the other rider with maybe a little bit less horse, but is a team player. That's for me a really important given thing. Because I know when I have one in the team which is not fits in the team, it's already a really big risk that you don't win the game. That's a given thing, because I tried it also in the past that I had uh, a rival in who didn't really fit in. And I, I could not make him go in. What I did in the 10 years is that I think I achieved that most of the riders we have in our squads, I can put them in. Because we make them also in our program, we help them by all kinds of things. Not only the 
the, the way of teaching uh, is important, but also all the other things, the, the mental coaching, uh, making sure that their own uh, uh, body is fit, uh, help them in organization. Like for example, this year, um, I saw that one of my uh, top writers, Jörg Frieden, um, had sometimes a little bit of a problem um, getting the focus. And then we talked about that. And then uh, you, you do that in an open conversation. And then we uh, immediately reacted. And we said to the Dutch Olympic Committee, so we have one writer, he needs a little support in that. And that worked out really well. And that is, that is also because you need to know your writers. And you need to know what they want. Um, to get back on, 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 on this year, you will know about it quite a green uh, new horse. Why did I pick him? That's a way of working with, the, with the, a top writer like Jeroen. We have an extremely open communication together. And when Jeroen Dubbeldam says to me, after Aachen, he said to me, oh, when you need me for the work, I'm ready. And that is for me a signal, uh, what is really important, because I have to go there with my strongest team. And when you know your riders really well, then, then you can do that. So the risk, and for sure, Kathy, it was already spoken up to me also that a lot of people say to me, you take your dollar, up and in it. He only did a couple of big shows, and uh, there are some, some more who did uh, more shows, and, and, and is it not better? But then that that it's again good that it's my decision. And when I say, okay, I go for it, and I know from the inside that when Jeroen says to me, I'm ready for it, then he is ready, and he was ready. And uh, that is now easy set for me because we wanted the two gold medals. Huh? It's always easy to, to, start, to tell your, your story from success. But it also was a minus point for me. In 2010, we had Kentucky. And I thought I had a good team. And you with Simon and Gerko Schroeder with uh, New Orleans were not really in a really, really good condition. Not, not in a really good shape. I was busy in that year with a lot of things. We had a lot of struggles. Uh, and that was maybe also, in the end, a bit of a negative side that I did not do enough effort in communication with all writers. And Simon was still a little bit uh, a problem on the water jumps. And he jumped it, but after that he was getting really strong. So I thought, ah, a little bit too early. The, 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 uh, world Equestrian Games, and uh, Gerkus was, was not in a really good form, so I skipped them both. Not that I say now to you that I made a huge mistake, no. I had another four riders which were really well, because that was a, a, a good combination, a, a good team, and we had a, a good season, we won uh, the IRK in Dublin with the same team and all of them were standing with their hands up and, and they were happy. And then we went to Kentucky. We were fourth after the speed competition and in the second, in the first for the, for the, for the country, for the Nations Cup, we had all four riders with eight poles and one, I think, with nine. But the competition at the moment is so strong that when you have one bad run, you're out. It's gone. And uh, that's the risk. And after that, I still say, um, I had the best team at that moment. But I forgot one thing that Jeroen said to me before, uh, I'm nearly there. But when he says nearly, it's not completely. But maybe I should have do something else. But that is also the, the difficult thing of coaching. And that is also the nice thing of coaching. If we would know everything from the beginning, from the start, then everybody could do it. So you learn from those things. But I think also that it's what I did with Vincent Ford in the past, what I did with Frank Schutter, uh, 
I think it's, 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 it's something what we should do. Do not stay always in that small protected world by uh, only the names of the writers. I, I, I was surprised when I looked back uh, to the web, but also to Barcelona, that I see from France uh, Kevin Stout, which is a fantastic, brilliant writer, but he was there with his fourth horse. That is not possible, in my opinion. Then, somebody else comes up, which is maybe number six on the list, or seven on the list. And that is a really, a really tricky thing for a coach. Don't stick only to the names. And that's an important thing, that's a given thing. And England also had a little bit of the same problems that they, they, they had years and years with David Groom, Harvey Smith, uh, Nick Skelton, John Whitaker. Only those four. All the others also. And if you don't let them in, they, they don't survive. And in the end, they don't believe you anymore. So that's, that's the difficult thing about uh, uh, this question. We have no microphone. Mine is already. Boy, uh, uh, one question. Uh, what kind of uh, connection you have uh, between the riders, uh, with the riders, between the big competitions you have? Because you are the team leader, so how you are aware of the situation, what is on the week with the riders? Yeah. Um, every week I call all my riders. Um, a little bit of lie, not every week, but, but a lot. We communicate really a lot, because it's impossible for me to travel to all the riders. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, we have some riders who use me also as a trainer, and we have a lot of riders who use me as a coach. But those are two different things. Um, I help them then, in the whole organization. Uh, when we get together in the meetings, then I always make uh, a piece of paper with all the shows on from a couple of months. We discuss that because it's difficult for writers to make a plan. So that's the thing where I help a lot in. Uh, by phone or by seeing them at shows. And uh, when we go to a, a big show with a team, we are always together. Uh, we go there on the on the Wednesday. We uh, have a meal in the evening. We have breakfast in the morning. We have a lunch uh, at 12 or 1 o'clock, and we have an e in the evening again a meal. And we discuss all details. And I think that's that's really important. The more that I communicate with my riders, the better I get to know them. And then I get information what you normally don't get when you call somebody uh, once a month. But I need to know exactly what goes on. I need to know exactly how the horses are. Are they fit to compete? Uh, I need to know how the whole situation with uh, the owners from the horses is. I need to know the whole situation, how the sponsor <coughs> is reacting. Because I want to try to help all my riders as best as possible in when they're having a problem with them. And that is also a, a, a really important thing, what I think, to keep in the, uh, in the quantity of big shows we have at the moment, uh, to keep everything fit. And what I felt when I was riding myself, if you needed a timeout, that was difficult, because if you took a timeout, it took you already, again, a couple of shows to get back again, that you had to show the coach that the result was again there. With me, that is not the idea. When a rider comes up to me, for example, Gerrit Bouillon, or all those who end up big balloon, which we have to defend the country with, if they say to me, you have, I want a time out with my horse, take it. And then you are ready again, 
I pick you immediately again and that you can go on. That's also a part of communication, but, but, but makes it easier to, 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 to give a horse a month, or maybe two months, a bit of a period of rest. Um, so all those things we do a lot with, with the riders. Uh, yeah, there's too many things to tell now, but, but if that, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And the more, the better you have that organized, uh, the better it goes. And it's, and it's difficult when you don't speak with somebody and then you go to the show with them and then you go to tell them a lot of things what is not right and what is, what is, what is not good. That doesn't work. Right with the figures of threat, it feels like Finland will not be in the next 10 years a big threat to Holland. It feels like that. We have formed a, a trainers club one month ago and uh, thinking about the cooperation between Holland and Finland since many, many years, could we be part of your coaches program, a development program that we could send maybe five trainers to your education? I think there's a possibility. It's not up to me now to say uh, yes or a no. But for sure I know that our little country is willing to be open to give information to other countries. They, they do a lot also in the, in the project we started with the, with the horses, buying those horses in that fund. Uh, they put everything on paper and they gave it also to other countries. Uh, a lot of uh, colleague coaches uh, from the Netherlands, which I have to work against uh, in big competitions, they also bring in those uh, that know how into our country. So I think I can bring it forward from 12 Federation and I don't say that. Uh, and what we have, a yes, we can get. But for sure we can, we can give it a, a try. Yeah? Now we have time for one more question. Okay. Thank you. We were talking to you last night and now listening to you to, to, to you here. I have to repeat what I said last night. You're for educated, cultivated, professional dictatorship. And that, that's what you've done very well in, in, in the Netherlands. And then I would really like to hear about that team, that your team is, is the main, main thing. Because this is, these are exactly the things that we are looking forward in Finland. And that's exactly what Karin was telling us in his study. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.